Hey everybody, Liam Clisham here for another Redshift tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to make your own transform object very similar to uh, the transform tool inside of Octane. Um, it's been a big ask for Redshift users for a long time. Um, it's really annoying having multiple textures set up and trying to scale them all at once and offset them and rotate them and all that. Um, so I'm going to show you how to set it up inside of Houdini and Redshift and then I'll jump into Cinema 4D and set it up in there as well. Pretty much the exact same, um, but since I have a good mixture of both C4D and Houdini users, I'm just going to go through it in both. So uh, I've got this simple scene set up. I've just got a sphere and a grid and a texture applied to it and um, I ended up making my own subnetwork for this but we can very quickly just start over. So it's really pretty simple you're just gonna use a couple vector nodes and that's it. Make some vector nodes and they can plug them all into the textures. So if I go in here and I just type in vector and I'm gonna use the vector maker you can use the user data too uh, it's just to me, using the vector maker makes sense. And we'll call this one scale. Pipe this out into general scale, and that's our scale tool. We can change this one to offset. And we'll pipe that one into our offset. And one more for rotation. I'm just going to call rot and rotate. And that's basically it. If you don't want to follow the rest of the tutorial, this is all you really have to do. You can start taking these and using them in multiple sources for scale, offset, and rotation. So say I want to scale this up to two times. We'll just do that twice. I guess it's not really scaling up two times. It's dividing by two because of how Redshift works. So say we wanted it five times the size. You can see it's getting smaller there and everything's adjusting all at once. Um, if you wanna rotate it, I'm gonna say we'll rotate it 180 degrees and that's that. So one thing to keep in mind with this is even though you have three vectors, um, there's only two actual ones that you need to control, just X and Y for scale, X and Y for offset, and then rotation is just gonna be the X since it's just a rotating float up to 360. Um, of course, you can go higher than 360, it'll just keep rotating around itself. So just keep that in mind that if you use Z in any of these, it's not gonna do anything. So to make this into an actual tool, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all these, and that's good. Just reset this down to zero. Good, good, good. I'm gonna click on this right there, make a subnet, and we can call this transform whatever you want to call it, hop in here, move these to the side, and we'll start hooking things up. So scale, offset, rotation, select this, and we can start naming these. So scale, flat, scale, there we go, offset, and rot. And for label, that's what's going to be on the outside of our subnet. So we want this to be scale. We want this to be offset, there we go, if it lets me type, and rotation, and that's it. So when we go back up one level, we now have scale right here, and scale, and then offset right here, and rotation, put it in there. Now you may be thinking to yourself, all right, how do I adjust these parameters? Well, we can just add our own. So I'm gonna go in here to edit parameter interface, which will pop this up. And like I said before, we need uh, these two vectors and a float. Um, I'm just doing float vector two because we only need to hook up the X and Y as I explained earlier, and then the float is just for the rotation. So in here, we can go ahead and name this RS uh, scale for the first one, just write scale. Then the next one we'll do RS offset, offset. And this one I'm going to do RS rot and rotation. Accept that. And now we have all this. And this very quickly do a cool little copy parameter, come inside, come into our scale, and paste relative reference. There we go. 
and just copy that and change this to scale Y for that one. And here I'm gonna do paste relative reference and we'll just change this to uh, offset. Copy that, paste that there, make this one Y. And down here we can do the same thing, but make it rot for rotation. All right, and now we have everything linked up. So one, one, and I did a bad labeling job on the offset. Offset, there we go. Just update that really quick. And let's do, we'll leave that at zero, but let's say we wanna update this. Let's try like 180 again, just to make sure. Did I, I must not have copied that right. So let's do that one more time. Copy parameter, come in here and paste relative reference. Ah, I didn't need the X, that was the issue. All right, simple fix, and there we go. So 90 degrees, rotated that way. If I wanna offset it on Y, let's say 0.5, and maybe X we offset it to, um, 0.2 is what I meant. And you can control it however you want. And if you wanna save it, just do a quick little save to gallery if you want, or create a digital asset, which is my recommendation. Just go ahead and create your own digital asset for that. So that's how you do it really quickly inside of Houdini. I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these out and we'll jump into Cinema 4D to set one up as well. All right, so here we are back inside of Cinema 4D and Redshift, and we're pretty much gonna be doing the same thing you can just do a quick search for vector and vector maker right there. And we'll just rename this one to scale. And control drag that. And this one will be offset. And we'll do it one more time. And this will be, you guessed it, rotation. <laughs> That's basically it. Uh, if you watch the first half of this, then you already know what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna change this to scale. Type this into offset, and this one, you guessed it again, rotation. That's basically it. Um, then you can come in here and set this to one and one. Again, just uh, it's a two vector float, so just only need to adjust these ones. I'm not gonna do the offset right now, and rotation, just to test it, let's do 90 degrees and you can see it rotating there. Now you have your own transfer tool. So if you want to bring in another texture, uh, let's go ahead and do that. This was our diffuse. So I'll just call that diffuse. We'll call this one, I think it's a roughness. It might be gloss. I'll have to see. This is just a free pack from Pixel Lab. It is gloss, so that's okay. No, don't need it. Just make sure when you pipe in glossiness, you change your settings to convert from glossiness to roughness. So it just inverts it. And then here we go, scale, scale, there we go. Offset and rotation, just like that. Now they all match. Um, you can technically make this into a tool as well. If you select them all and do convert to X group, that you can have a tool for that and kind of clean it up. Um, the only downside is even though the Redshift shader graph is based on Expresso, you can't make an X group preset with it. So that's kind of a bummer, or at least I haven't found a way to do it. So if you do know a way, please comment below and uh, I can make an addendum to this showing how to actually turn it into a preset just like we did in Houdini. Um, but as of right now, I haven't really been able to find a way to do that. But you can at least make a group and then you know rename it to transform. And then if you want to use it in another material, just real quickly, you know, copy and paste it, whatever you want to do with it. Uh, but it's that simple. And then you can open it up again, and you have all your ports right here, nice and easy. Um, oh, did that's weird. So let's let's undo for a second. Because I hooked it up to two textures first, it ended up making a bunch of extra ports, which we don't need. So I'm gonna disconnect this. Now if we make the X group, we'll just have those three ports. And yep, so they're good to go. And then we can go like this, and this will now be scale. 
this will be offset and rotation. Go ahead and drag and reorder that because OCD is fun. And then we can go in here and just rename this again as transform. Now we have the tool with just three ports, not the six, which can get confusing. All right, as always, thanks so much for tuning in. If you have questions, comments, etc., go ahead and leave them below. If you haven't already subscribed, I would very much appreciate it. And ring that bell or whatever YouTubers say if you want notifications and all that jazz for when I do another tutorial. Um, you can also find me everywhere pretty much as 531 on social media, Instagram, Facebook, etc., etc. if you want to hit me up somewhere. I'm always open to having a dialogue about anything, so feel free to email me and all that. But again, thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next one.